People, 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 welcome back to the Arsenio Buck Show. You already know who it is. It's Arsenio Buck reporting live from Bangkok. Guys, man, this is like the second day in a row that I have been live, and I am very, very happy and very, very grateful for always going live, and oh my god, it feels so much better. First and foremost, as always, man, yeah, hey, yesterday, that was some heated stuff. What, yeah, boy, I, man, you know what? I was spitting the truth yesterday. Ah, <sighs> man, oh man, oh man, I had no idea that that single podcast would completely blow up. And you know what the fact of the matter is, is, I know a lot of people, especially here in Bangkok, because that's where the majority of the plays came from. Listen, man, I'm just speaking the truth. I'm trying to help you men out here. You know, of course, no, I didn't get any emails. I didn't get one simple message from a guy saying, you know what? You have no idea what you're talking about. You know, no, 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 no. I'm just trying to tell you guys from a different standpoint, because, man, I see people coming out here for all the wrong reasons, man. This is all I'm trying to say here, man. So anyways, man, that was some heated stuff. That was some good stuff. And I just want to say thank you to all the live listeners that tuned into that specific podcast yesterday. And also, I just want to give a shout out to some cities out there, man. It's like, um, it's so interesting seeing where people are listening to me from. That It's just so fascinating. You see, it's like uh, what I'm going to be talking on, talking about on Gary V, uh, the Gary V podcast. Well, I wouldn't say the Gary V podcast, but basically, I always do like you know a couple of excerpts and uh, podcasts based on his book, Crushing It, right? Crushing It, which just debuted probably a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm going to be talking about this, of course, on there because there are so many people that don't communicate with their fans. There's so many people that don't communicate with their audience. So if you look at a lot of Twitter people who have 100,000, 500,000, 1 million, they just don't communicate whatsoever. Like if you look at the Kevin Hart, like the Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he communicates with his fans, right? Gary Vee, he always sends messages to the people who are, you know, who he's talking to, et cetera, et cetera. And so I just think it's so fascinating seeing who listens to me in one part of the world. So Peshawar, Pakistan, Dubai. Okay, Barcelona, St. Petersburg, Bangalore, India, Gresik, Indonesia, Palmas, Brazil, Tashkent, Uzbekistan, all of these places, man. I just want to give a super special shout out to you guys because it's just so awesome that my voice is being heard worldwide. And with that being said, man, um, yeah, I'm going to do just a couple more podcasts and that ain't going to debut until the end of next month. Uh, in terms of my workplace and whatnot, but I'm just so over talking about it. It's done. It's history. It's archived. And I just got to figure out what did I learn from that process that's going to enable me for the future. And so, uh, yes, the future is still very, very uncertain here, but boy, I have accepted everything. And I woke up this morning with a clean conscience, feeling so good. I didn't even go work out before this. I said, man, I want to do my podcast before I work out. And so here I am doing the podcast. Napoleon Hill, man, we are almost finished with this book, Tolerance, part four. Remember the plan to abolish war. I've been telling you guys about this. And Napoleon Hill wrote in his book, he said, war can be eliminated only by education. Through the aid of the principle of subordination of the individual interest to the broader interest of the human race as a whole. Any plan to abolish war to be success depends upon the successful, I guess you could say, coordination of effort between all the churches, schools of the world. Let's just put it that way, end quote. But the thing is, man, we really have to get down to the basis of what education is. Okay, yeah, what's education? This is why I'm so terrified of even having a kid, if a girl even wants to have a kid with me. Uh, but, you know, because I'm, what am I supposed to tell him? Yeah, go to school, get an education so you could get a good job. That's bullshit. You know that's bullshit. So, yeah, to a certain extent, education in countries such as Thailand, it's very, 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 very important. But education in terms of America, okay, yeah, cool. I mean, you know... Universities are going to be going through an, uh, an exodus very, very soon. I mean, what's the average debt for every college student coming out of, you know, you know college right now? Oh, man, yeah. Education, yeah. Going to school, learning the Y equals MX plus B, you know, learning the calculus and having all those Korean and Filipino and Chinese students saying, I'm better than you because I know how to add letters, you know, and then, then going to Penn and being saturated in debt, such as one of my best friends who's going to Harvard Dental School right now. And I just, you know, I wish them the best of luck. I really do. But oh, what is education? But OK, let's focus here. No ranting, Arsenio. 
No ranting. What is education? Now, I think, listen, I think people would point to religion to be in the, to be in the bane of existence of human existence to be in you know the three you know the big problem in terms of war in terms of everything that's happening right now but honestly it's the media i'm going to give you guys one nice little example now if you look at what's happening right now with the winter olympics okay i could care less about it circle of concern but this was a very very good very good topic to bring up in terms of this because you got the what is it the i'm not even gonna call him a dictator i don't even know the man so i'm just gonna call him by his name kim jong-un his sister uh she shook the hands of the south korean prime minister and now she invited him to pyongyang now these this is amazing but you know what the American tactic in the American media says? Oh, it's just another thing to cover up this and that. And we're going to keep posing sanctions and we want war. We want war. We want war. See, this is the problem with America. They just love war. They love killing. They love making machines of war. I'm American. I know how it is. I'm just telling you. Think about it. Man, we've been at war since 2001. Just bombing everybody. We went to... Afghanistan when Osama apparently was in Pakistan. I don't even know who Osama is. You you know what? I, just put one and one together. Stop believing the BS you see on TV. Seriously. I want you to realize how going back to this North Korean, Kim Jong-un's sister shaking the hand of the South Korean prime minister. If they can destroy that demil- demilitarized zone. I can't even say the goddamn word, but if they could destroy that and become one Korea, do you know how much that would help the world? But you know what? Until America just, uh, it, and this is the thing, man, America, and especially with the administration right now, we're going to keep posing sanctions. Uh, North Korea, they better hurry up and, you know what? All axes are on the table. Shut the hell up. Dude, these are, this is huge for the Koreas. God, America wants just absolute war. They've always wanted war. Look at the history of America. The fat man, the little boy, the Vietnam, the this, the that. This is the bane of human existence. What is the plan? What is the plan going forward? Now, guys, this is all circle of concern. I don't get, I, I really can't do anything about the Koreas. I can't do anything about the administration in America. I can't do anything about the bombs being dropped and what's going on out there in Syria. You know, you know, all these, these, these big bombers, these big American bombers conducting airstrikes, killing all these children. That's been happening over the past week. I can't do anything about that, man. But I will talk about it right now because now you guys have a good understanding of what the hell is going on in the world. Got it? Napoleon Hill. He went on to say, he said, war can be eliminated, not by appeal to reason, but by appeal to the emotional side of humanity. Yes, the emotional side of humanity. Listen, this is why I honestly wanted Hillary to become president, because women, they're not war junkies. (laughs) I mean, think about it. Women, they're more peaceful. Am I right? What? Correct me if I'm wrong. Hey, if we had a woman... Prime Minister, King, Queen, Prince, Queen, the Princess, everything in every country right now in the world, there would be no war. Want to bet? I'm just saying. History has been shown that men love power. Okay, go back to the Napoleon of France. Go back to the Genghis Khan of the early, early age. That man killed everybody. Look at what has happened over the last 500 years. Look at the slave owners of all the... Eastern part of South America up into the Caribbean, the Haiti, the Jamaica, the Barbados, the, Trin- the Trinidad and Tobago, the Puerto Rico, the enslavery. <laughs> yes, okay, the Africans, they, they enslaved their own people, blah, 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 made a march about 1,000 miles. Yeah, I understand that. I'm just saying, man, men want power. Men love war. Men love to talk sh- You know what I mean? <sighs> oh, my God, the emotional side of humanity. This... Appeal must be made by organizing and highly emotionalizing the people of different nations of the world in support of a universal plan for peace. And this plan must be forced upon the minds of the oncoming generations. See, the new generations. I'm so excited about the new generations. Because what we're seeing right now is the last older part of the generation. Do you understand Donald Trump was over, is over the age of, what, 70? Right? He was here when the Vietnam War was occurring. 
So do you think he's going to have a very open mind about what's going on in the world? Freak no. I mean, everyone, everyone over the, you know, particular ages, they've been through hell and back. Do you understand? I just met a man that had to watch the live draft on TV. In terms of, you know, the draft with the Vietnam War. Going from A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know what I mean? That That's the age that they live through. So are they going to be open-minded about life? Hell no. But you know what? The younger generation, the Facebook, the Twitter, the Snap, the this, the that. Oh, I'm telling you, man, I really do believe in about 20 to 40 years, this world's going to be much, much safer. But the thing is, with religion, they're going to have to come together. I'm talking about the Muslims, the Jewish, uh, 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 the Christians, the, the Buddhists, the, the this, the that, the Tibetans, the, whatever you want to call it, man. They all need to come together, hold hands and say, <laughs> religion was religion was wonderful 1500 years ago when we thought Apollo was in the sky, the god of fire. But guys... Look what's happening. It's wreaking havoc on the world. All of them. Oh, my God is better than yours. No. Stop it. So, Napoleon Hill, he said, it's not stating the possibilities too strongly to say that the churches of the world could establish universal peace as an international idea within one generation if they would but direct toward that end of, you know, that end one half of the effort which they now employ in opposing one another. So instead of going against one another, do it towards something more constructive and more peaceful. See, Mother Teresa, if you said Mother Teresa, you know, and asked her, hey, would you like to, uh, uh, would you like to come to an anti this rally? She said, absolutely not. When you have a pro peace rally, invite me. Why? Because she's pro peace. If the organized religions of the world, as they now exist, will not subordinate their individual interest and purposes to that of establishing universal peace, then the remedy lies in establishing a universal church of the world. And that will function through all races and whose creed will be based entirely upon the purpose of the implementation in the minds of humanity. There it is, universal church. Hey, I think I've heard of that before. Is there such thing as a universal church? I forgot what it was. Anyways, excuse me. Oh, I had to get my breath back. But just think about it that way, guys. If we actually have a church, if we actually have all of us coming together in one, saying to each other, you know what? We're going to just strip all this label. And there's no such thing as black. There's no such thing as white. There's no such thing as yellow. There's no such thing as Muslim, there's no such thing as Christians, there's no such thing as Buddhism, there's no such thing as this or that or this or that. You know what? You know what? Oh my God. You know what could really, really work? You know, I went to an international school, which I've always mentioned before, called NIST, and it's in the heart of Bangkok, and there are 60 different nationalities that go there, right? So you got the the Indians who wear the turbans, right? I forgot, I forgot what that's called. And then you have some Muslims. And then you have the Swedes, you have the Chinese, everyone talking together and having a blast. There are no labels in that school. So, what are you trying to say, Arsenio? If you could send someone from Dubai, from Uzbekistan, from China, from Indonesia, from every country, and and basically, let's say this, right? This is my. This would be amazing. Let's say you have a school of 1,000 in every town in America. Now, this could, and the thing is, I'm just going to pinpoint America because I do believe America, and especially the American media is the root of all po- of root of all problems. I'm sorry. No offense to the people who actually listen to me from America, but guys, think about it. The media is as toxic as they come. They spew out venomous, uh, uh, just saliva. They're just foaming out the mouth. It's disgusting. But let's focus. You get 1,000 students. And you know what? How many countries are there? Something about over 200, right? I don't know. I don't know the real number. Um, And I want you to divide two. Okay, let's say you have 3,000 students, right? I want 12 people from each country around the world in the same classroom studying. First grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. Okay, that's elementary school. Middle school, sixth, seventh, eighth, high school, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. I want two. I want all the countries in the world to have one or, you know what, a dozen students study at this one school all across America in every town across the plains of America. Not only America, but Mexico, Costa Rica, all these places. Why? Because then you're going to be exposed to every single culture in the world. That's the universal law. That's the universal law of peace. 
See, when you are able to come together and come to peace and start opening your mind up to different places. See, that's why I moved to Australia, man. My first housemates in Australia, they were from Mauritius. I said, what's Mauritius? They said, oh, it's east of Madagascar. I said, Madagascar. Okay. I said, okay, well, that's the movie. Okay, let me see where Madagascar. Okay, east of Cape Town. Okay, and then east of that is Mauritius. Remember the first time I went up to the girl from Mauritius, I said, hey, are you India? She looked at me. She said, don't call me Indian. I'm Mauritius. I said, what the hell? I said, oh, you're Mauritian. I said, well, Mauritian. I said, God damn. Got a proud listener from Mauritius, by the way. Shout out to my Mauritians. Hey, you know what? Had some really bad things happen to me with Mauritius. But anyways, that was in Melbourne. That was like seven years ago. I love you guys. Um, Going forward, my second pair of housemates, they were Colombian. Next thing you know, a Bulgarian came, an Australian. That exposed me to so many different people. By the time I came back to America, nothing was ever. I mean, it, it was just, it was a completely different mindset. Mm. I loved it so much. I do encourage all you Americans and all people around the world who have been living around just one certain group of people to travel and open your mind forever. You know what? That could be another thing. That could be another cure to abolishing war. Traveling. Traveling to every country you were told not to travel to. America tells you, oh, bombs in Afghanistan, bombs in Afghanistan, bombs in Pakistan, bombs in Pakistan. Baby, I got I got you. You know what? One of my ultimate friends like from what was it from probably about 2007 to about 2011 her name was Myra Gafour. She also had a friend, a beautiful friend by the name of, I forgot. And they were both from Pakistan. Were there bombs going off in Pakistan when they were there? Well, of course, they lived in a different area. But they never said, hey, Arsenio, that's all BS. Stop it. Cut it out. And I'm like, well, well, well this is what they're saying. Well, why do you listen to them? And then that's when I realized that the media was a bull a shit. <laughs> you know? Because I realized people from Pakistan, it don't matter where they from. From the people in Swahili or Swaziland, whatever you want to call it. Swaziland, there we go. From the people in Swaziland to the people from in Mongolia. And I met some wonder. oh my God, when I was in the Maldives, I met the most wonderful Chinese family ever. And they were like, oh, you'll teach her. I said, yes, I am a teacher. And their daughter was so adorable. They were like speaking amongst each other. Like they were whispering like, oh my God, wow. I, I don't know what they were saying, but they were speaking in Chinese. Then we, we got out the car because all of us, we went to the airport. We got dropped off in one car. Um, they got out and they were like, okay, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. You know, they were the most nicest people on the planet. And it's funny because I had a lot of bad experiences with Chinese people, but those are just individuals, guys. We have bad experiences with all different types of people, but we can't label it and say, oh my God, well, Nigerians, they come here to Thailand and they sell drugs. They're all bad. Bullshit. You know, you know, you're full of shit because not all Nigerians are bad. There are wonderful places in Nigeria. There are wonderful places all around Africa. There are wonderful places all around China. There are wonderful places all around the goddamn world. Oh boy, I'm on the rant this morning, baby. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I had to get I had to swallow that. Anyways, guys, what I'm trying to say here is go meet a friend in another country right now. Right now. That's your goal for today. I want you to go on Twitter. I want you to uh, like put a hashtag Dubai or put a hashtag uh uh, uh Copenhagen, uh put a put a hashtag uh uh Lisbon, okay, Portugal, and I want you to meet someone. I want you to meet someone. And that's why the Samoans and the Indonesians are actually the nicest people I've ever met because my very first friends we're from Indonesia and Samoa and Australia. And that was just like a foreshadowing of what was about to happen, too. Just so funny. Because some of my best friends today, they're Indonesian. And I don't have any Samoan friends, but I want to make some. But anyways, guys, I'm just trying to tell you. You got, you just got to feel it. You got to meet people. You got to travel. And once you do, you now have control over your circle of influence. And when you have control over your circle of influence... Your life will never be the same again. So try it. Try it, people. And with that being said, man, 20 minutes. I hope you guys know. I hope you guys got something out of this. I'm going to be finishing. I was supposed to do this last night. But guys, man, I got barely any sleep. Crazy things happen Friday night. <laughs> um, I do hope. I do wish I could just hope Um, just do the last Napoleon heel tonight. If I can do that, then I go into the golden rule and finish up this book within the next two weeks. Gary V, tomorrow morning, as you know, Monday and Tuesday. Stephen Covey will be debuting probably tomorrow night or the night after. 
some excellent listening skills. I got to put that out there. And what else is there? I completely forgot. Uh, what is it? Of course, Darren Hardy, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe Napoleon Hill. And I might throw in some Lewis Hose. I might not even throw that in as a main podcast. But guys, just stay tuned. I'm going to be putting the schedule out there. So stay tuned on the ArseneoBuckShow.com. And until then, people, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. This is your crazy host, Arsenio. Sound like a damn preacher, a preacher of the world, a preacher of the universal world. Over and out.